All right, praise the Lord. I got the music going in the other room. Daniel put this camera on here. So I guess I'll have two tapes. It'll it'll tape in there. Leave it on, honey, in there so it can continue to tape, okay? Daniel? Honey, leave the video on. All right, I turned the music off. Okay, but the video is still going, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure that video goes because I put it up on YouTube as well. So we're out here because it's cooler. Um, I'm going to share a few encouraging words first, and then um, uh, I, I'm not used to this standing up for long periods. But um, if I got to sit down, we'll sit down on the couch here. Um, let me share um, Marshall Burns' word today. I'm, I'm going to share Prophet Russ's word, I believe, when I do another teaching. But uh, Marshall Burns said this today You're in the process of breakthrough. Solutions to problems will not be quick or easy, but once you break through, they will be lasting. The changes you make to achieve the next level in your life in the spirit will come without, will not come without effort. Eventually you will look back at this time and see that the difficulties of this time were not only necessary, but optimum in producing life and growth, says the Lord. Press on. You know, um, she's right. Remember how we've talked about how, how, um, if you're in a doctor's office and you're waiting for your name to be called, not everybody's going to be called at the same time, all right? So wait until God gets ready to call you forth and do what he's called you to do. So we've got to press on. We can't give up, saints. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen? All right? Let me read you a few encouraging words. You know, grace for today. I've read that before from this devotional. You know, I kept forgetting what day it was. The time is going so fast, saints. I mean, there's no time for nothing anymore. Do you see it? I mean, you don't even have to go anywhere or do anything. The time is just flying. Today uh, um, is the 25th. Green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet, quiet waters. Psalm 23, 2. Remember I told you, Psalm 23. I mean, Psalm 23, this is verse 2. But read, in your spare time, read. All of Psalm 23 and Psalm 91. It is blessed assurance to know that an omnipotent and loving God guides you from day to day. The Lord does not promise that all the pastures will always be green. Sometimes they will be barren and desolate. He also not promised that the waters will always be tranquil. Sometimes the waves will break turbulently over us and the sky will be covered with ominous storm clouds. But the promise is that God in his time will bring us to green pastures and quiet waters. If we put our childlike and unconditional trust in him, we may rest assured in the knowledge that God will guide us in our everyday lives. Just drop the praise the Lord. All right, Lord Jesus, there's a prayer. Shepherd of my life, thank you that I may be safe and secure in your care. Help me to accept your guidance at all times. Amen. All right. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna read just the other one too. Jesus always. Um, this was a good word too. You know, don't you like to be encouraged? I do. We've got to keep encouraged, saints, because um things are changing and they're gonna change even more. Um, refuse to worry. We've talked about that before, Matthew six. Refuse to worry, my cherished one. Displace those worry thoughts with trusting and thankful thoughts. Affirm your faith in me while praising me for all that I am and all that I've done. This combination of praise and trust is potent. 
It drives away anxiety and powers of darkness. Also, it strengthens your relationship with me. You may still have legitimate concerns to deal with, but I will help you with them. As you become more peaceful, you can look at your problems in the light of my presence and seek my counsel. Let scripture inform your thinking so that I can communicate with you more clearly. Take time to thank me for the many good things in your life. I want you to express gratefulness in your prayers and your conversations with others and in your private thoughts. I read your thoughts continually and I rejoice when they contain gratitude. You can thank me even for things you wish were different. This act of faith helps you break free from negative thinking. In everything, give thanks. This is my will for you. See, we've got to praise God no matter what we're going through. And that's not easy. I'm going to tell you right now, when you're hurting and you're going through trials, that sometimes is the last thing you want to do. But we have got to praise God knowing that God is in control and he's working this out for our good. There's a reason. There's a reason you're going through the trials that you're going through and that I'm going through. You know, God wants to make us ready for what's coming. All right. If we allow him to do the work in us that he wants to do, you know, I'm not used to coming out here and I, I need to get, get my eyes checked again. You know, I what was going to say, you know, I'm wearing clothes. So <laughs> I should say I work. I don't like to wear a lot of clothes. It's hot here in Florida. It's like in the 90 degrees. I made Daniel put a short on because I, you know, I sit in my shorts or my little tank top. Because it's so hot here. Now, I know people will judge me and they're going to talk about me. But you know what? That's okay. I, I don't really care, you know. They can say whatever they want. But see, God knows my heart. All right. Let's, um, let's talk about these prophetic words that I want to share with you here. I know a lot of people don't want to hear me. And a lot of people are not tuning in. But I'm going to tell you, and I'd say this to other saints. You know, you've given warnings. Maybe you have a prophetic gift. Maybe the Lord has been using you and the others are, pay, are not paying attention. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, a time is going to change where they're going to want to hear what you have to say. Right now, no, they don't want to hear. But when something happens, they're going to tune you in and they're going to hear every word that you have to say. All right. I've got a few words that I want to share. I'm trying to think which one to share first. We're going to talk on this one here because I... For those that are not subscribers on our YouTube page, you may want to go over there and subscribe. Um, I place more videos on there. I probably won't be putting as much on fa uh, Facebook. I don't even know where I'm going to be. The Lord is in control. You know, this is temporary right now. We're waiting on the Lord to open doors for our ministry. Uh, in fact, I told you we've got to sign another lease here. But, you know, and this is for you as well. You know, maybe you think, well, God... You told me you're going to do this and you're going to do that, but I don't see anything. You know, God's got the last say. It doesn't matter what man says, all right? It matters what God says. So I know that God can get me out of this apartment, all right? He has a way of doing things in your life and in my way, in my life, that you and I don't even know of, okay? So we have to trust God. If God said it, he will do it. It's going to be in his own way and in his own time. But today we're, we're going to talk about the enemy will attack America when it's weak. We've been talking about that. I've given you tons of prophetic words. You can go over on the YouTube page and you can listen to them. It is coming. I don't know when, but it is going to happen. Um, yesterday, I mean, he just kept speaking one after another. And, uh, and so this first word that I'm going to share with you, let's see it. This one was, uh, um, well, we're going to talk about this one in a minute. He gave this one to me, let's see, what time was it? 2.15. But he gave me a word at 3.23 p.m. Let's, um, well, no, let's start, do this one first. Let's do them in order. Okay. All right. So I called this the enemy will attack America when it's weak. I got this at 2.15 in the afternoon. Now, I told you, um, and Jesus gets the glory and the praise, I have a prophetic gift like Deborah the prophet is. And I know, you know, and Jesus gets the glory. I'm not lifting up myself. I give Jesus the glory. And I feel the Holy Spirit because I've seen him be working in me that um, I've been saying things to the president that I don't even know why sometimes, you know, and then telling him what we need to do. 
and and um, I feel that's the gift that God has placed on my heart. So this uh, uh, prophetic word is directed to our president. I'm going to read it to you, okay? And then we're going to read scripture here because this is what I heard God say to me, okay? The enemy attacks when you're weak. I said, Dear President Donald Trump, America is at war right now between good and evil. The enemy will be on set, ready to attack America when, in at, when it's at its weakest. And see, that's what the devil waits for. He waits until you're weak. And that goes for us Christians. That's why we got to make sure we're getting our rest, we're prayed up, and, and not allow the enemy to wear us out. America has made enemies with other countries. There is no protection in America, okay? And I'm, I'm just going to be honest. We're not looking to God. Who's protecting us? No one. We need God in America. The only one who will protect America and keep the people safe is God Almighty. Apart from Christ, the Bible says you can do nothing. There is nothing we as a nation can do now. America will be humbled by God's own hand. And I feel, and I've said this before, I feel something is going to happen to America. Now, we've been seeing more and more of these earthquakes. I told you a massive earthquake is coming to the United States of America. I've talked about a tsunami back in August of last year. Okay? Two years ago, I woke up at 3 a.m. in the morning and I, and I said, move away from the West Coast. And now we're seeing more and more of these earthquake swarms over on the West Coast, over in Oregon, all right, Washington, Canada, California, small swarms, and the news, scientists are talking about it, okay? They're saying that the big one is coming, and it is, all right? I believe we're going to have more than one disaster, all right? So I believe we're going to see something that's going to happen to America, and the enemy is going to look for an opportunity to come in and attack us, all right? I said, there's nothing we can do now. America will be humbled by God's own hand. Other countries will not help this great nation of America. We as a nation must cry out to God. And that's true. Only God's going to help us. These other countries are not going to help us. These false gods are not going to help us. The only one that can do miracles is Jesus. So we've got to go to Jesus. I said here, we as a nation must cry out to God, repent, and seek his face. The Lord will turn from his anger and help America. Now, I'm not saying that everything's going to be perfect. No, we're going to go through things, okay? But God Almighty will help us, all right, if we go to the Lord and seek him. Um, and he said here, the Lord will turn us from his anger and help America. If America refuses to turn to God Almighty, America will be destroyed. Okay? If we do not turn to God Almighty, America will be destroyed. That's what he said to me. All right? We have got to turn to God. And I know God's going to protect us, saints. All right? Because remember what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah? He said, how many people are... Lord, would you destroy them if there were so so many, remember? And so I truly believe it's going to be somewhere in the middle. God's going to get us out of here, all right? He's not going to judge you and I with the wicked. And I said, please, Mr. President, receive this word spoken in love from the Holy Spirit. The Lord loves his people. He refuses to tolerate willful sin. America is engrossed in willful sin that goes against God's holy word. God will not bless a nation living in willful sin. America needs to come out and seek God's face today. Destruction is at the doorstep. Repent America in sackcloth and seek the Lord's face. President Donald Trump, we must do what Daniel the prophet did. And this, I'm, I'm telling you, I've never had this before. This is what God said to me. And I'm going to read it to you. He said, we must do what Daniel the prophet did. Uh, Daniel 9, 1 through 19. If you want to read it, this was Daniel's prayer. Daniel 9, 1 through 19. In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, I'm not good at pronouncing words, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet. That the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. 
So I turned to the Lord. See, that's the, he turned to the Lord. In verse 3, he said, And pleaded with him in prayer and petition and fasting and sackcloth and ashes. He goes on to say in verse 4, I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed. Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Verse 5, we have sinned and done wrong. We have become wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. Verse 6, we have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings or princes or ancestors and to all the people of the land. You know, we're not listening. There are other prophetic servants that have given the warnings and nobody wants to pay attention. The church doesn't want to listen. The world does not want to wake up. I've sent letters to President Donald Trump. I've sent letters to his secretary, Vice President Mike Pence. Remember that letter I put on Twitter? I've sent letters in the mail i've put them on youtube i have warned and i keep warning but no one is paying attention i've called the white house they've hung up the phone um i know somebody from albeda king ministry which is on the prayer team okay i've been sending them there i mean i've spoken with somebody from frank franklin graham ministry billy graham and you know so I have been warning, but nobody's paying attention. No one's passing my letters on to the president. Okay, what's a prayer team? That's what we're supposed to be doing. We should be looking out for the welfare of our nation and for the people that live here. We should be taking it to prayer. We should be asking God, what are you wanting to say? It's not about who we know, our fame, and what we look. No, it's not about that. President Donald Trump, if you're listening to this video, you need a prayer council that's going to do what is right. You need people that are looking out for our nation and are going to pray and seek God. That's why they're a prayer council. That's why they're part of your team. If not, like you always say, President Donald Trump, you're fired. Right? You say, if you're not doing your job, you're fired. Well, there are those that have that position that are not doing their job, President they're not informing you. They're not telling you what's going on. Uh, people, we have heard um, Governor Jared Brown say it's a climate change. No, it's not a climate change. It's, a it's called God's judgment on a nation that's living in willful sin. And, you know, there are people that say, oh, you can't have a Christian president. Oh, yes, you can. If God has placed President Trump in there for such a time as this. We need to be praying for him. We don't need to be talking about him. He needs your prayer, saints. Okay? He's there for such a time as this. You know, you want your freedom, right? Do you want your freedom taken away? Then we're going to be in trouble. You want to be like China? You want to be like these other nations? I know I don't. You know, I said to Daniel the other day, I said, you know, all these Democrats, all these people that want socialism, and you got Bernie, say, I don't get into all that politics, all right? They want, they want what they want, and they don't care. They, they just want it, all right? Whether it's good for them or not, they just want it. And, you know, remember Jesus said, I'll, he'll send leanness onto their soul. So they want what they want. They want their killing millions of babies. They want their transgenderism. They want their gay lifestyle, their lesbian lifestyle. Hey, I'm going to tell you, we love you. That's right, the Christian loves you. No, I'm not judging you as a person. You're judging your sin. God does not want you living like that. You know, he created Adam and Eve. He didn't pay, create Adam and Steve, all right? We're not going to get into that. I don't bash the homosexual. I want you to know we love you. You know, they need to know their love. God loves them. In fact, I think a lot of them are going to come to Christ. God is going to touch them. He's going to wake them up, all right? And But we're allowing this in our nation, and we need to stop it. We need to do what's right, okay? Now, there may be things going on behind closed doors, but we as a nation up in the White House should endorse that, okay? We shouldn't have false gods. We Remember when President Obama was in there? We, he had all these Muslims up there being part of the White House. No, we don't want that. You know, there's only one God that's going to help us, and that's Jesus. We don't worship these other gods. And, and they were taking God out of everything. That's what they're doing. 
They're taking God out of everything. We're becoming more and more secular. We don't want it. You can't even mention God's name anymore. It's getting that bad. It's going to get even worse than this. This is just the beginning. We've already seen the mark of the beast rising, 666. They want to have people in code right now with that mark in the forehead or in the right hand. If you're listening to me, don't take that mark because you're not going to be able to buy or sell. You're not going to be able to, money's not going to be worth anything. Right now, yes, we need to have money to do what God has called us to do. You know, if you're listening to me and you want to help our minister, we have third partners. I don't have the address. It's all on the website. Come beside us. Help us. You know, because in order to do what God has called us to do, we need people to help us. And we have people that have helped us. And God bless you. You know who you are. You know, it doesn't take a lot of people, but it does take the right people. And I want to tell you something. You are held accountable with what God has given you. Pastors, preachers, I'm talking to you. God has blessed your ministry, all right? But are you using that money for God's purpose? Or are you pocketing, going on vacation, doing what you want to do, all right? Yes, God's going to bless us with our own money. He blesses his people, all right? But I don't believe in taking from God's money that should be going to the church to help the church, help others that need help, all right? All right, we're reading that scripture, Daniel 9, 1 through 19. So he prayed to the Lord, and, and he asked, he said, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his coming of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judah and the heavens of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, and all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you, verse 8, we and our kings, our princes, and our ancestors are covered with shame. See, a time's coming. I'm not tell and I've said this before. In fact, I said it in another one. That there, there are going to be those up in the White House on both sides, Democrats and Republicans, and even some of those um, prayer team members, they're not going to know what to do, okay? Only God's going to help us, all right? We're going to have to turn to God Almighty. Remember what happened in Joseph's day? Remember God gave visions and things to Joseph, all right? Let me go on and read this. Um, verse 9, the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. Verse 10, we have not obeyed the Lord our God, kept the laws he gave us through his servants the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. See, we're refusing. I, I, there's Christians that know what to do, but they don't want to do it. You're disobeying God. Do you hear me? If you are listening to me and you know what to do, you're disobeying God. God knows your heart. Who are you fooling? You may fool man, but you are not fooling God. God sees everything. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. Verse 12, you have fulfilled the word spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing us great disaster. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. See, something's coming that's never going to be done before. It's going to happen. America's going to change. It's never happened before, but it's going to happen. There's coming changes to our nation. Get ready. Verse 13, just as it's written in the law of Moses, all the disasters come on us, yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. We have not turned. We say, God bless America. Well, God cannot bless this nation. We're living in willful sin. I'm going to tell you right now. He is not going to bless America. He's going to judge America is what he's going to do. You know, you know, you guys, fathers, when you were younger, I know I did. My dad, I told you before, I'm Italian. My dad, and imagine if my dad did, my earthly dad. Can you imagine what our heavenly father is going to do? God is going to judge America. All right. Verse 14, the Lord did not hesitate to bring the disaster on us, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we have not obeyed him. Verse 15, now Lord our God, 
who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand and who made for yourself a name that endures to this day. We have sinned. We have done wrong. Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill. Our sins and the iniquities of our ancestors have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn to all those around us. Verse 17, now our God hears the prayers and petitions of your servant. He's asking the Lord, now our God hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Verse 18, give ear our God and hear. So we need to go to God and repent. If my people will repent and seek his face, cry out to him. It's important, saints, that we go to God. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Verse 19, Lord, listen, Lord, forgive. See, we need to go to God and say, God, forgive us. God, we need your help, Lord. We can't do this on our own. We need you, Lord. We've got to humble ourselves. The problem is America's become too prideful. We don't want to humble ourselves. We think, oh, we can defeat all these nations. We can do anything. No, we can't. Without God on our side, we can't do nothing. We have got to have God on our side. Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. See, there are God's people still here. So we've got to cry out to God. Save us, help us, Lord, we need you. Second Chronicles 714. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. That's one of the scriptures that gave me, and here's a few more. Psalm 121. The Lord will protect his people. I look to the hills. Where will I find help? It will come from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. The Lord is your protector, and he won't go to sleep or let you stumble. This is from the contemporary English version. The protector of Israel doesn't doze or even get drowsy. The Lord is your protector. There at your right side to shade you from the sun. You won't be harmed by the sun during the day or by the moon at night. The Lord will protect you and keep you safe from all dangers. The Lord will protect you now and always wherever you go. See, if we listen to God and we walk according to his ways, he will protect us. He'll lead us. He'll guide us. And that goes for you, saints. If you are going to God and you're seeking the Lord for wisdom, you need to be praying that right now for you and your families. I'm going to tell you right now. You need to be praying for you and your families. We don't live in a, 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 Things have changed in America, okay? And they're changing daily. We're seeing more and more. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Amen? John 15, 5. I'm the vine, Jesus said. You are the branches. If you remain in me, I and you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's right. Apart from Jesus, you can do nothing. We have got to remain in with Jesus. All right, that was the first one. Now, I want to share this with you. This was uh, Barbara Francis gave this. You will reap what you have sown. I just got this this morning. Babylon, Babylon, your mystery has been revealed. Your destruction shall be in one hour. Your great king will be surprised as whirlwind of fire devours and consumes the cities. The odor of death will fill the land. The proud will beg for mercy. The arrogant will be humbled. That's right. The arrogant will be humbled. The righteous will be spared. My eyes have seen the abominations. Your land is soaked in blood. Your wickedness knows no bounds. Warning after warning falls on deaf ears. Nobody wants to listen. It's falling on deaf ears. I will punish the unrepentant. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah were punished for their wickedness, shall the inhabitants of Babylon be punished for their sin and perversion. I am not mocked. You will reap what you have sown, she said. All right. Now I'm going to read you this poem I've read it before. America will fall this day. 
I wrote this in 2016. America once looked to God and prayed. You've walked away and I declare to you, America will fall or what may. America, America no longer is God your head. You become a harlot making your own bed. How far have you gone turning your back? Make no doubt God is not slack. The beginning of tribulation is now, says the Lord. Judgment for America is here. Saints of God, do not fear. Stay close to God. He is very near. If you do not know Christ, your time is now, says the Lord. Do not wait. America is filled with horror and hate. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you have never given your heart to the Lord. Repeat this prayer. I, I, a lot of homes have prayers. All right? I see myself speaking to crowds of people. So if you don't know Christ today and you have not yet given him your heart, say, Jesus, I need you to save me from hell this very. Just tell him. Say, Jesus, I need you to save me. All right? Wash me and cleanse me. Blot out all my sins away. I receive you in my heart this day. Thank you for your love poured out to me in a special way. If you don't know Christ, just call him today. Everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But you've got to mean it. You can't just say this prayer and then walk away and do what you want. No, you have got to mean it. You have to confess your sins to Christ and ask God for forgiveness, cleanse you and wash you in his blood. Noah gave a strict warning that the flood was coming. No one wanted to listen until it came. The flood came and did not look the same. That is what will happen to America. Now, I'm not saying we're going to be flooded. So don't go say, oh, Prophet of Stone saying we're going to be flooded. No, I'm not saying that. I mean, we are seeing floods, but we're not going to be flooded. Okay? The crops are getting ruined. We've talked about that. All right? Which the news should be talking about. Uh, states can't plant crops. All the crops are being ruined. Locusts, we've talked about that. What about all these things that are happening in our nation? Weather changes? All right, I said, receive this warning today, says the Lord. America will never be the same. A disaster will hit our nation. This is no game. Be wise, says the Lord. He, listen and heed to God's warning. America is closer than it's ever been. There is a war that's coming, says the Lord. America, you will lose and not win. That's right. There is a war that's coming. America, you will not win. You're fighting this battle on your own. God is not with you. They have many more compared to your few. In the Old Testament, when God was not with Israel, they lost the war. You're blinded, says the Lord. America is prideful to the very core. Now America will be humble for all to see. This nation has become a disgrace. God help thee. Where else can the people turn? Turn to Jesus or else burn. Everyone who calls on the name of Christ today will be saved. Psalm 124, if the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive. Verse 3, verse 4, the flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Verse 6, praise be to the Lord, who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. All right, let me share these other two words real quickly, and then we're going to pray. I, Like I said, I have more I want to share with you, but I'm not going to do it right now. It, you know, if we have time, hey, we'll share it later. You know, time's changing. I'm going to tell you right now. That's why I told you it's very important that you seek God. I can't get myself stressed out. I'm only giving you so much and uh, that's all I can do. You know, God keeps talking to me and speaking to me. He's preparing me for what's ahead and he's preparing you. So we've got to all get in and seek the Lord in these last days. All right. Now, this word he gave me at two, he spoke again to me at two, uh, no, at 3.23. I heard the Holy Spirit say, in a blink of an eye, everything will change. America, America, you were once a great nation for all the world to gloat over and see. Today, that's all going to change for you, I heard him say. Daniel, are you here? Yeah. Stay out here because I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> when I get ready to shut this off, I'm going to shut up in here. Well, no, I'll 
Never mind. Sorry. I'm not going to worry about that. I got all these computers going, and so I want to make sure I do it right. But um, we'll worry about that later. I'm not going to worry about that. Sorry. All right. We're talking about in a blink of an eye, America will change. America, America, you want a great nation for all the world to glow over and see. Today, that's all going to change for you, I heard him say. Those days are long gone, never to be heard of again. Change is coming quickly, I say to you. My children, get your house in order. America will never be the same. Today is a new day. America will look different. And remember, we've talked about that, about the White House. That's going to change. I remember, um, Sarah Sanders is stepping down. And remember, they're talking about how President Trump hardly has any brief meetings. I believe, the Holy Spirit showed me this, there's going to be prayer chambers. They're going to be praying in the White House. All right? You will not even be able to recognize it. Children, you will now know that I'm your daily bread. All other gods are false. I, Lord, am the only true God. Look to me, children, to provide all of your needs. Stop looking to man. And that's right. We've got to stop looking at man. We don't worship President Donald Trump. We worship Jesus. Man does not have the answers. I, the Lord, will show you what you and your family must do. Seek me now in your inner room, sir. You will find my presence. And that's what he gave me. I looked up the word gloat, to look or glance admirably or amorously, to observe or think about something with triumphant office. Malicious satisfaction, gratification, or delight. You know, people look at America and, you know, because we've always helped other nations. But a time is coming where we're not going to be able to help no one. We're not going to be able to help ourselves. Okay? God's going to have to help us. And if God doesn't help us, we're in trouble. These scriptures that gave me, Isaiah 55, 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. I'm sweating. It's hot here. I don't know why, but I'm sweaty. This it could be this short. <laughs> All right. Matthew 6, 6 to 8. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they'll be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. See, Jesus knows what you and I need before we even ask Him. Jesus knows, and He will provide. If we're going to learn and we're seeking Him, He will take care of us. We can't let worry or fear cause us to, to react, because that's what's going to happen with a lot of people. We've got to be at peace with the Lord. Uh, um, Jesus will give you and I peace, all right? He's the Prince of Peace. And if we're not perfected in Christ, we're, 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 we're going to be stressed. We're not going to be at peace with God. A perfect love costs all, all fear, the Bible says. John 6, 35 says, Jesus said that I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Philippians 4.19 And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Notice how it says, and I've said this before, he'll provide all your need. It doesn't say he'll provide all your wants. He said he'll provide all your needs. He knows what you and I have need of, so God will provide. Now, this last word I'm going to read to you. The enemy is planning an attack against the United States right now. That was yesterday. I heard that. I was in the shower at about 6. I stayed in the shower. I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, they are planning an attack right now. Then I, I'm sensing this attack that is coming will affect the nation's power grids. Now, that is what I'm saying. What I was sensing in my spirit. I'm asking you to pray. Okay? Now, we, I, I don't know if you heard this. I heard that we, we did a cyber attack against Iran. Now, um, I believe something's going to happen with the power grids. On. Now, I've talked about this before, like a few years ago. Now, I believe the enemy's going to come at our power grids. Now, why is our president trying to fix the infrastructure? They know something is coming. I'm sensing this attack that is coming will affect the nation's power grids in various states, we're showing you. 
America lose power for our time being. And um, that's what I was sensing. Lights out. This will cause mass chaos, I heard him say. Hold your peace. Pray for President Trump and administration. This will affect the whole nation of America. There are those in office from both sides in the political arena that will not have answers to the problem. Only God will have the answers. It's time America seek the face of God. And he gave me again, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. All right, saints, we need to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for America and we're going to pray for our president. We're going to pray for all of us. Um, like I said, a lot of people don't want to hear this type of word. They want, they want to pretend everything's going to be okay. No, it's not. Changes are coming. And the church needs to wake up. Because if not, they're going to have a wide awakening. So let's pray. Let's pray uh, for the body of Christ. Let's pray for all of us. Let's pray for our president. Father, we come together in agreement right now. Lord, I thank you for what you're getting ready to do. We're not going to be afraid or worried, Lord. We know that you're in control of what's getting ready to take place, Lord. Our hope and our trust is in you. It's not in a man, Lord. Father, we pray for our president, Lord. We love uh, President Donald Trump. We don't worship him. We worship you. We love you, Jesus, with all our heart, Father. But I, we know that you can do anything, Lord. So, Father, I'm praying for him that you would change his heart like a Nebuchadnezzar, him and the Trump administration, Lord, that now is the time that we turn our hearts back to you, God. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Only you know, Lord. But we do pray for him. We pray, God, for a hedge of protection over our present. No weapon formed against him shall prosper. Father, we love Jesus over him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. We ask that you give him direction and to lead this nation, Lord. We can't do it. So why are we judging him? So, Father, we pray for him right now. He's just a man, just like we are, Lord. None of us are any better, Lord. We're all sinners saved by your grace, Lord. So we come together as a body of believers. We don't gossip and uh, get on YouTube and, and share vision and gossip. No, we pray, Lord. We pray for him and for the new world order that's turned against him and the Democrat Party, Lord, and all those that are trying to take our freedoms away in this nation, Lord. And, Lord, these other nations, Lord, that we can't trust them, Lord God. We can't trust Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, Lord. The only one we can trust is you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray for miracles to be established. These are the last days. You said we shall do greater miracles if we but believe. We believe now is the time, Lord. Now is the time that we shall go forth and do your will, Lord God. I pray that many more Christians will step up to the plate, Lord, and realize that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few, and that you need them, Lord, that they'll be bold and strong for the days ahead. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord. I pray for all of our brothers and sisters, all of us, Lord. Put a hedge of protection around us and keep us safe in these end days, Lord. Wherever we go, whether to the right or to the left, that you will direct us and guide us, Lord. And that we will spend time with you and pray for ourselves and our families, Lord, and our loved ones, Lord. Because now is the time for us to get into our prayer closets and pray, Lord. So I pray for them, Lord. I pray for those that may feel discouraged or hurting, Lord, or lonely, whatever it is. Maybe they feel like they're drowning, oh God. I pray for them right now that you'd lift them up out of those waters, Lord, where they're drowning, oh God. I pray for those that are sick and by, Lord. We stretch forth our hands. Stretch forth your hands and believe with me. Lord, you can do anything, Lord. Father, I pray for those that are sick and body to be healed. From the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Whatever your sickness is, just receive your healing. Miracles are coming. I know they're coming. God has shown me they are coming. We have got to believe. We have to have faith. Lord, we believe. We trust you, Lord. We know you can do anything, Lord. This is the hour. This is the time, Father. We thank the Lord. We praise you for what you're getting ready to do, Lord. Even though we don't see it yet, Lord. We're walking by faith, Lord. We're trusting in you, Lord. And I, I trust you. Daniel and I look to you. 
You have no one else to look to. We only look to you, Father. We thank you for what you're about to do. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. It's time, saints, that we look to God because I'm going to tell you right now, my hand's not going to help us. We've got to be looking to the Lord. All right, I want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. Please keep us in your prayers. Um, until we meet again, this is Prophetess Dawn O'Brien, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfelt Corner. I'm going to shut this down here. Daniel, do we shut down here? I'm going to shut this video down here. I'm learning how this works. Shut it down here and see if it's shut down in the other room. All right, take care. God bless.